Good morning, everyone, and happy Monday. I hope you all had a wonderful weekend and a wonderful week. It's time for music and makeup, where I sit down and I talk about an opera or a um, musical or a musical style. This week, I wanted to talk about a Baroque era opera because my music history teacher at school has been talking a lot about this particular composer and it's made me think about it and some of the operas that he's done. We're going to talk about Le Coronation de Popea or The Coronation of Popea by Monteverdi. The Coronation of Popea by Monteverdi. This opera is an Italian opera and it was the last opera that Monteverdi ever wrote. It was performed in Venice during a carnival season that was happening there. First performance happened in 1643. Now this opera was later revived in Naples in 1655 but after its revival in 1655, it was lost and unable to be found. Like no one knew it or where it was or anything until it was rediscovered. Its score was rediscovered in 1888. That is a long time. It then became a big subject of scholarly tension. A lot of school teachers and, and history buffs and music history buffs looked at this opera and talked about it and the way that it worked and the way that it used instruments and the way that it used voices most of the 19th century and 20th century. And since then, the opera has been performed a number of times. Let's talk the characters and the voice parts of Popea. We first have Popea, who is a noble lady. She's also um, the mistress of the king, or Nero. This is where it gets a little creepy that he that she's his mistress because she was raised by him and that voice type is a soprano we have octavia and octavia is the reigning empress so she is married to nero the emperor and that character is also a soprano a drusilla and Drusilla is also a lady of the court drusilla is a lady of the court and she is in love with nero Lots of people are in love with the Emperor. She's also a soprano. We have Cupid. Cupid's a big part of it. Cupid's like the mischief maker of the of everything. Uh, we have Venus. There's morality characters in this show because a lot of opera goes with the idea of gods being part of everyday life. And so, yeah. So there's Venus, who is a soprano. Um, and Demiglia, who is a lady-in-waiting to the queen sorry, to the empress, and she is also a soprano. Otheo, who is a noble lord, that character is a contralto. There's Seneca, and Seneca is a, Seneca is a philosopher, and he is also Nero's tutor, you know, grew up raising Nero into, like, becoming an emperor, and that character is played by a base. Then there are three guard members. One of them is the captain of the guard, all who are played by tenors. Are Naleta, who is the nurse to the empress, and then Nutrice, who is a nurse to Popea. Those are all mezzo sopranos. So before I get into the story, a lot of what historically has been talked about this show, this show was one of the first shows that showed problematic characters got rewarded. It's often told that the story shows that virtue gets punished while greed gets rewarded, which hasn't been done before. Most shows up until then have a morality idea that gets that shows that good wins out in the end and if you're good and you're kind you'll you'll win and this show is kind of the first one who, who 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 the argument is they he didn't do that the opera's characters are famously problematic 
in the way that they treat each other, the way that they are, the way that they go about their lives. Historians have said that at best it's an ambiguous show and at worst it's perverted. Unbelievably glorified idea of lust and ambition. I thought it was important to kind of say in the beginning because it's it's interesting a lot of the operas that I've talked about and the musicals that I've talked about here they all have a kind of overlapping morality of good beats evil so I just thought this one this one this one's different this one's interesting let's talk about the show Overture starts and does its thing as overtures often do and then comes a little prologue and it's basically the two goddesses virtue and fortune and they're ha and they're having a little argument over what is most powerful among humankind is it having virtue and having goodness or is it having lots of fortune and power but they get interrupted by none other than cupid the god of love cupid is claiming that the greatest power is that of lust and love and all things that cupid stands for he says he is the most powerful and he says that love is what tells the virtues what to do and that it's the most powerful form of government among men he says that and he basically he he basically tells them wait till you hear this story i have this story to share with you guys and when you hear it you'll know that what i speak is true the story starts to unfold before our eyes and we come across a villa which is the home of Popea. in comes her one of the men among the courts who wants to try to win her affection and he's carrying flowers and he's gonna knock on her window and and proclaim his love but he notices that there are guards of the emperor outside her villa so he starts to go into this sad lament because he realizes that Popea is already spoken for by someone that he cannot go against because it is that of his emperor exits because he doesn't want to go against his emperor that would not end well for him and as he leaves our focus switches to the guards and the guards start gossiping all about their master's affairs you know because Popea isn't the first of a long line of affairs that this emperor has gone through and they start to talk about the mistreatment of their empress octavia they kind of shut up because coming down from the stage coming out of the house is Popea and nero and they're saying their goodbyes before nero parts to go back to the palace and they just kind of exchange some words of love i love you i love you too you know, romantic-y, a fairy things, I don't know. He's off to the capital. And Papea gets warned by her nurse because in comes her nurse to kind of clean her up after the little romp that her and the emperor had. And he and her her maid just kind of warns her, her her nurse warns her to be careful because the empress is not someone to be messed about, you know, because she's still around, but none of his other affairs are. She just wants to make sure sh that her mistress is being smart as a mistress. And Papea is kind of not even worried. She's like, kind of brushes it off and says, whatever, we come to Octavia in her bedchamber. Octavia is kind of feeling sorry for herself, you know? She's kind of saying that she's a queen who's despised by her people and by her husband, that he doesn't even want her. 
and that he has his own mistresses and now this new one that he spends all of his time with and her nurse says well maybe you should get your own lover maybe you should find someone who you can spend your time with and she kind of brushes off this idea brushes off this idea that that's stupid and she doesn't want to take a lover she's basically disgusted by the mere idea of laying with someone else and then in walks Seneca the timing on this is just perfect because he walks in he addresses the empress he wants to speak with her his words are super flattering to her you know all about just you know how how brilliant she is and all that all that jazz the emperor's page boy has been came along the emperor's page boy came along with Seneca and he starts mocking him like why are you talking about the emperor's wife in this way and all that and he says if if the emperor hears you talking this way you know you're gonna get fired everyone leaves and we come into the bed chambers of the emperor and he is confiding within his page boy that he plans to displace Octavia from being empress and marry Poppea. So basically divorce the current empress and instead wed and make Poppea the empress. His page boy kind of warns him that that might not be the best option, that your people will find that to be unpopular, you know, if the queen was to die, that would be okay, but you can't just, you know, kind of send her away and and divorce her and expect the people to go along with it. And the emperor is kind of, I guess like maybe a little bit off his rocker because he basically says, I do not care what the people of the court or the peop my people who I rule think. I don't care. It makes no difference to me. I want to marry Papea. Come across Seneca kind of trying to play the cards a little bit. And he's trying to say that he is the reason why the emperor is as great as he is because he taught him everything he knows and he is basically the brains behind the whole operation. And Popea overhears this on her way to go to the palace. She runs back to the palace and tells Nero about this plan and this kind of just weird speaking that she's heard. She hear she, you know, she tells him, I overheard Seneca claiming that he's the reason why you're so powerful. That makes the emperor really, really angry. So he orders his guards by any means make Seneca kill himself. And then Popea starts her journey back to her little little apartment, her little house. Along comes her lover that we saw in the opening scene. And he tries to persuade Popea to be in love with him and to leave the king or the emperor. And she responds no to him. You know, she's not going to leave. She's not going to leave the emperor. And this upsets him a lot. So she... So he privately plans to kill her. He gets comforted. You know, he, he, he's on his way back to his place and he gets comforted by another noblewoman, Drusilla, realizing that he'll never get Papea. He, he asks Drusilla for the hand in marriage and you thought 90 Day Fiance was fast? Try like 90 Second Fiance, because she accepts. <laughs> and she happily, you know, starts strutting off going to tell all of her friends, look at my, look at my engagement. Well, he's still not over Papaya. He's just came to the realization that he has to find someone else. Not going to beat out the emperor. So we come across Seneca. He hears from a reliable source that he is soon to die. He hears it from a letter. We don't know who the reliable source is, but it's kind of just assumed that it's a reliable source and that the order is coming straight from the Emperor Nero himself. Guess that this makes sense to Seneca. 
So he orders for his friends to prepare him a bath, a suicide bath. And his friends and his family kind of try to persuade him to stay alive. You know, they're like, we can hide you away. You know, like you don't have, you don't have to kill yourself. You don't have to die at the hands of someone else. Like we can work this out. Kind of tell him that you've not done anything wrong. So your blood is going to kind of haunt the royals forever if you choose to do this as far as we know he's going through with it and back out the palace we have the emperor getting drunk partying up he's celebrating the death of Seneca and he starts to compose in his drunkenness he starts to compose this poem to Popea, explaining his love, how they're going to be together soon, and nothing can stop them. Meanwhile, we see the plot to kill Popea thicken. Octavia summons Popea's ex-lover, or I guess he was, never, he was in love with her. They weren't ever lovers. She summons him to the palace and orders him to kill Popea. So now it's not just one person wanting Popea dead, it's the empress who wants Popea dead and she basically tells him that if you don't want the emperor to find out that you're in love with Popea you will kill her and she kind of tells him you should disguise yourself and he agrees you know Popea's lover agrees to killing Popea but when he leaves Octavia's bedchamber he quietly asks the gods to relieve him of his life because he doesn't want to kill Papaya. You know, he he wants to kill Papaya, but it's it's one of those things where it's like you're so mad at someone that you're like, ah, oh, I could kill you. I mean I've never done that. It's one of those things where you're so mad at someone you're like, oh I could punch you. But you don't actually want to punch them. You just like you're upset so you say stuff. So he goes home, he persuades Drusilla to lend him some clothes. We come across Popea in her her little apartment and she's getting sung to sleep by her nurse, right? The nurse is singing her this little love song about how beautiful she is. And in walks from like the corner, in walks her lover, who's now disguised, who's now disguised as Drusilla, right? And he raises his sword to kill Popea, but before he can do so, Cupid comes in and strikes his sword from his hand. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, throughout throughout the show, like throughout every scene, Cupid is kind of lurking. This is the first time he interacts with anyone, but throughout the whole show, he's kind of the comic relief of the darkness. He, like when you're watching it live, he is doing funny things. Like he never says anything or interacts with anyone, but he'll like, he'll fly down from, you know, the sky and like do like a little funny like face or dance. So he's not crucial to the storyline, but in the sense of like, if you don't know that he's there, it's not a big deal. Like it doesn't affect anything, but it, it just like, it makes it funny when you're watching the opera live. So, but this is the first time that he actually interacts and does something to the scene that's unfolding. He hits the the sword out of Drusilla, aka Papaya's ex-lover, hand, and then he flees. <laughs> and he is seen, Cupid is seen by Papaya's nurse. And at this point, with all the commotion, Papaya is awoken, right? And they believe the person holding the knife and trying to kill Papaya is Drusilla. So she calls on her servants to go chase after Papaya. Even, I mean, sorry, to chase after Drusilla, even though Drusilla is not Drusilla, it's her, her ex person who was in love with her. And Cupid pops back on the stage and goes, I, I protected her. You know, he's like, I don't know why I did that weird Mickey Mouse voice. He's like, I protected her. I saved her. We come across 
Jusilla, the real one, and she's talking about how she's so happy and how she has a husband. And Pepe's nurse arrives with a guard of the empire, like the emperor, because word got back that the emperor's lover needs some help. So she arrives at Drusilla's doorstep and she accuses Drusilla of trying to kill Papea. She gets arrested. We come to her arresting, her being arrested, and Drusilla's thinking like, what's going on? What's happening? And then her hus her, hu her future husband slash Papea's ex-lover comes in and says, she didn't do this. You know, he's trying to protect her innocence. He's like, she didn't do this. And he tries to denounce the fact that she did it. Nero threatens her with torture unless says, well, if you didn't do this, do you know who did? Were there people who helped you plan it? Were there people who actually executed it? And to try and protect, to help protect her future husband, she basically claims that she did everything, that she was the one who planned it and tried to execute it and it failed and she got caught. And the emperor sentences her to a long suffering death at this point in the show her future husband can't handle it anymore he realizes that she's just trying to protect him but he can't let her do that he can't let her die he can't have that death on his conscience so he 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 spews the truth you know he says that he was a lover he was in love with Popea and he was jealous that she didn't want to marry him and she wanted to marry the emperor and that he plotted her death and he dressed up as Drusilla and he is the one who solely did this alone. And that he was, he, he kind of kind of throws the queen, he kind of throws the emperor, empress under the bus because he says that he acted alone but he was acting under the guides of the the empress to kill her. So he she ordered him to kill Papea. And he says, because of all of this, because I was the one who did it, because the queen ordered me to do it, Drusilla is not guilty at all. We need to let her go. This kind of impresses. So the emperor is a little bit impressed by the fact that Drusilla was willing to commit herself to death just to save someone else. He spares the life of both Drusilla and her husband or her future husband. But he basically says, you guys have to be exiled. You're no longer allowed to be here. You're no longer allowed to live here. You have to be gone. Now, the fact that the Empress Octavia ordered someone to kill Papea he find, he's like, finally, I have a reason to get rid of you. He gets rid of Octavia by exiling her as well. Allows him to marry Papea. No one can, I mean, people can object, but no one will object to him marrying Papea because the queen tried to kill someone. He exiles, he boots her off the island. Boom, him and Papea can get married. And of course, Papea is overjoyed. She's so excited. And she's like, nothing, this should not be delayed any longer. No one can come between us. Let's get married tonight. Then in the throne room, Papea is getting prepared for the wedding, right? The council to the emperor comes in and he places the crown on Papea's head after saying a little eulogy or or a little speech about the monarchy of Rome and all that jazz. Watching this all happen in the corner of the stage is Cupid, Virtue and Fortune. The opera ends with the gods watching and Papea and Nero, the emperor, saying their love and, and, and saying how happy they are that they finally get to be together. The curtains slowly close. And that's, that's the whole show. The coronation of Papea. The coronation isn't the longest part of the show. It's, it's the shortest part, but the, the show talks about, and, it, and it's, it basically talks about how we get to her coronation. Now it makes kind of sense what, what people were talking about with the problematic characters of having affairs and wanting to kill people. I hope that you guys 
enjoyed it, give me a follow if you want and hit that like button if you want. And know that I upload twice a week on Monday and on Fridays. And every Monday I talk about music. I talk about shows. I love talking about music so much and I also love makeup so much. So this gives me an opportunity to do it together. So I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.